that's why, why I kind of really get fired up when it comes to the medical system and, and the pharmaceutical industry and, and you know, the, the, the food industry and politics that come into play where we're being lied to left and right with Monsanto, with, you know, all these different big businesses, you know, and, and you know, I'm a capitalist, but at the same time, you know, not at the expense of, of destroying one's health. That's just, that, that's gone too far, and that's, what, that's what's going on right now. Welcome to the Calorie Conundrum Podcast with Coach Strick. Join us as we expand the weight loss conversation to beyond just calories and dare to ask the question, why does eating less and exercising more sometimes not produce the desired results? Here's Coach Strick to discuss this calorie conundrum. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Calorie Conundrum Podcast. This is Coach Strick, and today we have yet another blast from the past. On today's podcast, I sit down with Damien and Heather Dubay of E3 Energy Evolved. In this interview, we discuss Heather's health crisis and how as a couple they healed multiple ailments, many of which are considered to be impossible to cure by current conventional medicine. I love their story because it highlights the fact that if you want to recover from chronic disease, lose weight, or just improve your health a little bit, sometimes you have to take charge and find your own answers. Now don't get me wrong, our medical system today is more advanced than it has ever been and has saved countless lives, but the one area that our current medical system lacks in is finding and resolving the root cause. Let's hear how Damien and Heather's story of investigation and discovery ultimately led to identifying underlying stressors and how by addressing them holistically led to a full recovery. Well, hello everyone, this is Coach Strick, and today I'm here with Damien and Heather Dubay. Damien and Heather are diagnostic and functional nutritionists, natural athletes, and expert magazine contributors, teaching women 40 and up stuck in frustrating thyroid, adrenal, and metabolic blocks how to fix their broken body and restore optimal metabolism naturally. They are co-creators of E3 Energy Evolved, a system for women to achieve the natural change they deserve, lose, lose the fitness and food trend obsession, and finally make peace with their body. They discovered this during their three-year struggle to heal Heather's Hashimoto's disease, chronic fatigue, Canada, toxicity, and autoimmune illness drug-free through nutrition, mindset, and lifestyle changes. Their work is featured in Experience Life, On Fitness, and Men's Fitness, and their nutrition peer reviewers for top fat loss brands like Tap Out XT. With over 46 years combined experience and education, their credentials include diagnostic nutrition, natural health, psychology, exercise science, national level natural competitive athletics, consumer nutrition education, agribusiness, and nutrition research studies. They've personally mentored with top industry fat loss experts, including E3 Energy Evolved Advisory Board member, Dr. John Bernardi, Ph.D. and Precision Nutrition Founder. They work with beginners to Olympic athletes, but most enjoy helping midlife women beat ongoing endocrine, digestive, and immune-related concerns by sharing what they personally learned beating each successfully. Amy and Heather, welcome. Thanks, Sean. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us today. You know, uh, in your media kit, you say um, that you are advisors to burnt-out middle-life women uh, struck in seemingly unsolvable uh, chronic health and fat loss blocks who are ready to fix their broken body and create their lifetime best metabolism naturally. And, you know, that's the the exact type of person that I'm, I'm trying to help with this website. And uh, as a personal trainer, I just got, uh, you know, so frustrated with this mindset that, you know, weight loss is all about calories in versus calories out. You've got to eat less and you have to exercise more. And uh, this, this frustration stemmed from the subject of weight loss, but I think the story that you have to share today, um, it highlights why it is so, you know, so, so important to realize that it's, more, it's about more than just, you know, just calories. So, Heather's... 
your story includes thyroid, adrenal, digestive issues, autoimmune illness, chronic fatigue, candida, pancreas toxicity, and partial lupus. And, uh, you know, these things sound a little bit more serious than a few pounds around the middle. Uh, can you share your story with us? Oh, gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, for Jamie and I, we actually been involved in the fitness industry for quite a number of years. Um, before I even was sick, we had been doing competing and were really blessed to be great friends with Dr. John Barney for Precision Nutrition. And so we kind of had our own background and were really aware at that point that even, you know, calories wasn't, you know, just the thing to be concerned about. Um, it's really sad you see in our industry, and I'm sure, like, that's, it's great to hear your passion because you see a lot of people thinking that less is more um, when actually more is more, right? So when we give more to our bodies, we're going to get back more. And a lot of people are in this idea of restriction, you know, equals weight loss. There's a lot of ways it's going to cap, but actually when you limit your body by limiting your calories, you limit its potential to work for you. Um, so, you know, we were kind of already doing a little bit more of the eat more, you know, in that, in that phase. And I still got really sick from a time in our life when I was going through a lot of personal stress and life stress that there were just a number of events that came upon us that were out of our control. And... I really was putting my health care on the back burner a little bit, but that intense stress over our chronic, you know, period or um, period of time eventually ended up throwing my body in a bit of a tailspin internally. And unfortunately, I was seeking help from doctors, a lot of different types, but I was getting led in a lot of wrong directions. You know, they were really looking at the symptoms and not root causes. And they were kind of saying, well, you know, you kind of have allergies or you have a rash or, you know, I I had all these senses and I felt awful. I just felt awful every day. I had no energy. Um, I had stopped competing at that point. And I got to a point where I couldn't even commit to or find the motivation to show up at the gym for the first time in my life for many, many years. Um, um, I had been, you know, really committed to working out since I was 17 and then, by that point, I was in my early 30s, and all of a sudden, I just I felt awful all the time. And the chronic fatigue that I had, which I didn't know at the time that's what it was, got so bad that it was hard for me to even go to work and such. And so when we got to that point in the illness, we got really serious about it. And, you know, the turning point for us was the decision that we wanted to really take a path of working um, through it naturally um, and then, you know, kind of using holistic nutrition, essentially, functional nutrition and integrative health approaches for my energy and my function. And so coming out of that illness um, and learning that there's really more to nutrition um, and just wellness principles of the body that helps us lose weight naturally and just be lean naturally was huge awakening for us about, you know, the body. And then after that illness, we went back when I was ready, when I was ready to go back metabolically to competitive athletics, we really wrapped the things that we learned to heal my Hashimoto's and my metabolic damage and all those issues that was going on when I was so, so sick into competing, and it was a completely different experience um, than what you see for most people that are trying to, you know, get lean or lose fat or whether they're doing that for athletics or just for themselves, it's, it was more about adding things in and getting a better result by giving my body more versus taking away from it. Yeah, that's a that's a good story, and thanks for sharing it. Um, my question uh, was: this all these you know diseases or malfunctions of the body? Were, did you was it like a downward downward spiral type deal, or did one day you just wake up and be like, oh man, I'm I'm hurting? It, was it like slowly getting worse over time? Or was it just something yeah, that hit you out of the blue? Question. or? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, for us, it, you know, it was, it was slow in the beginning. And, you know, we see this now with the women that we work with and the men. We work with two brave men, too. But mostly women come to us, you know, in their 30s, you know, 40s, in life, even 50s, 60s. Um, it, 
it's more that in the beginning it's like this slow kind of you know you're not right. Like you just you start to get a little tired. Yeah, you're like tired. Your motivation starts to wane a little bit. Like you know, most of the people that we end up seeing, it's someone that's either committed to fitness or they're a fitness professional or they're an athlete. Like or they just or have always been someone that exercises regularly and all of a sudden like they just don't feel the desire to go anymore. So like those are the things that started to happen for me in the beginning. It was more slow. But the thing that's interesting that, you know, that we love like helping um, people restore these things naturally now is that in a stress adaption cycle, basically what's happening is overused your stress adaption systems in your body and so in the beginning, it'll be like slow, but the, the problem is, is if you stay in that state too long, which is what happened for me because I was getting misdiagnosed and I was getting the wrong answers at doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor for like a year and a half, two years. And while those internal imbalances were still going on while I was getting the wrong answers, when you get to a chronic state, it progresses fast at the end. So it's like your body will try to hold for you, but then it's this point where it drops off. And like Damien can kind of explain the science a little bit better than me. You know, when, when you're, you know, women especially just have a lot to deal with. They have a lot on their plate, whether it's kids and, and running a house and, and then having to work on top of that. You know, they just, it's, it's constant stress. And the body will adapt and keep adapting. I mean, it's got an innate ability to do such a thing, right? But it does come a point where you kind of hit that threshold where, you, you, your body's having a little difficult time adapting, and that's when kind of symptoms start to appear, where you're starting to feel a little bit tired, a little bit um, no energy, maybe some digestive issues, you're not sleeping as well, so on, and all of a sudden, as time goes on, it just it just cascades into other things, um, joint pain, um, real bad headaches, you know, it, I mean, the list just goes on, eventually, uh, um, autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's and, and, and chronic fatigue and things like that. You know, so it, it, it usually is a progressive type state, and unfortunately our medical system looks at it as, oh, well, if you have a symptom, here, let's treat that symptom, rather than looking at the actual cause. And really the cause is the, the, the stress, and that stress comes from emotional, physical, mental, um, you know, all different types, environmental, you know, and it's, it just adds up. It's all cumulative. Excellent. And uh, there's one one point I'd like to point out to the listeners is that um, Danny Johnson uh, from the SweatyBetties.com also said the same thing, is that she was a fitness competitor as well, and she got to the point where she couldn't uh, go to the gym and work out, even though she wanted to. And the point I want to make to the listeners is that for someone that's a competitor in fitness, and that's their life, if they're too tired that they don't even have enough, you know, energy to go to the gym, then there's obviously a really major malfunction in the body. And um, so for people that are maybe aren't competitors, but they have a lot of other stress because I'm sure that the competing, the fitness, you know, um, lifting weights so hard, and a lot of people that are doing it, you, you said that you guys were kind of eating better, but a lot of people are cutting calories, which can be another stress. And um, But other people might not even be working out, but they still have a lot of stress uh, from other, you know, you know, like household responsibilities or emotional, you know, stress or digestive stress or whatever. And so um, j- just to show, I mean, that just shows you how mu- how tired you must have been for somebody that, you know, that's their life is to kind of work out and be in shape, and they're, and you're too tired to do that. And I just wanted a point that I just wanted to kind of uh, bring out to the listeners. Um, yeah, and other, if I could touch on that, just to, you know, a, a lot of times um, competitors especially, they, 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 they go through that phase where they the constant dieting, intense exercise, stuff like that does um, mess them up metabolically. And then – it's kind of like, well, fitness is bad or, or competing is, is, is a bad thing, it's unhealthy and so on. And that's not necessarily the case either. It, it's mm-hmm. coaches that don't understand the, how the body actually works and they're kind of cookie-cutting programs for all their clients 
yeah. not taking into consideration each individual, right? Each individual, how their bodies are functioning, their stress levels, their, their nutrition requirements and stuff. Um, you know, and it's not necessarily that competing is, a, is necessarily a harmful thing. It's the coaches that are making yeah. it a harmful thing yeah. because they are, they are screwing these girls up. And then there's a lot that add other, other you right. know, um, not so exactly. natural supplementation into right. the mix too, yeah. which we find quite yeah. a bit, which then just completely shuts down their endocrine yeah. system. It's a tough, it's a tough, hey, I mean, here's the thing, like a, a man's, and a, a, a men's bodies and women's bodies are completely different. And, you know, we have an industry that's predominant in male coaches that are, they're thinking about the body and their athlete's body more like a general body or their body versus understanding that, you know, when, um, when I was able to heal, you know, my Hashimoto's, I mean, these are really extreme things that if you go to most doctors, they'll tell you you can't heal them. I mean, I wasn't even on Synthroid. A lot of people that, lot of people that are like saying, oh, I, was, I healed my Hashimoto's, but they still had taken Synthroid or Arbor. And we, you know, I was able to do that through lifestyle change, through integrative health principles, through functional nutrition and energy restoration without the use of those things. You know, most doctors still think that's not possible naturally. But we don't want women to be scared of competing or kind of feel afraid and think, you know, hey, I, I, I can't compete or competing is not, not necessarily good for me. When I went back to competing, I just understood it in a completely different way because I understood at that point, you know, how my endocrine system, how hormones affected competing, how digestion in terms of functional nutrition was really, really important so my body could produce ample hormones in a balanced way. So, you know, um, how I was eating so I met the energy demands effectively I was putting on my body at a new or a renewed level. Um, and I was able to go back to competing at the best shape of my life in my late 30s at the national level after a thyroid illness and an autoimmune illness. So, and, and I didn't lose my period on stage. I was completely level. I had a great mood. I had great energy. I didn't have any backlash when I walked off that stage. My body was ready to stay in the same level of conditioning. You know, you're still kind of at the edge, right? But so our message really is that there is a way to, when you, when you learn how to give to your body systems internally at a different level, you know, not being so worried about a number on a scale or a look that the outside of my body has, but you learn how to do that from the inside out in ways that support your endocrine system, your digestive system, your autoimmune system at a level that involves integrative health principles, then you can just enjoy being lean naturally. Because now, you know, I'm 40 years old. My husband's 41. We don't overtrain. You know, we don't, we don't even work out like that significantly. I think a lot of people think they have to, you know, beat their bodies up and do HIIT training and all these things. It actually can really overstress your body and sabotage your metabolism, which is what a lot of women are going into now. So even when I competed at the national level, I never used HIIT training. I, my, my cardio wasn't that intense and it wasn't that long. It was more about what I was eating and how I was supporting my body so that, you know, detoxification was considered, things, things like that, you know. Does that make sense? Kind of like when you, when you remove those things that are really in your body's way, your body's metabolism just functions better naturally. So being lean just happens without as much effort. Yeah, that, yeah that's exactly, you know, that's exactly the point that I kind of want to make to people is like, like you said at the beginning, like people just think that, you know, you know, more they need to do more exercise and they need to eat less food and it's just like there's a, there's a happy medium where you 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 know you give your body enough um nutrition which is energy and you you stress it enough to give it some you know something to build on top of so you can build muscle you know just enough but not too much and and that's where people i think run into problems is you just go too hard too fast too extreme, and then they find themselves down a road that's kind of hard to come back from. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, you, you make a great point. Essentially, the, the, the issue is what we see, and it's for a success for a lot of women competitors and just women in general that are committed to their fitness, is 
The problem is when you pass that point, when you're kind of dancing in those areas of energy restriction and fatigue, you're not going to get past it by trying to force what you want on your body. At that point, if you don't correct those issues internally, you're dancing in a very dangerous area of costly illness that can really take you out. I think people really need to understand that we see a lot of women kind of having these pre-issues of the fatigue, you know, internal endocrine, you know, issues, digestive issues, bloating, those kinds of things, but they're not really taking the symptoms seriously enough. And that's partly because they didn't go down the path yet that I went down and that we went down. That was a very costly path. It cost a number of years of our life and over $40,000 to correct, and I was so sick towards the end I couldn't work. And if you want to change your life significantly, <laughs> get sick enough where you can't even show up at your job, it's, it's life-changing. It's life-changing, and, and it'll put you in a boat where you have no choice but to make those issues number one. And what we want women to understand is they have to get on the front end of it. They have to do things like we're doing now with women where we run labs and we do them differently than a lot of doctors, to be honest, and even natural practitioners are doing. We're looking for very specific markers and different ways. We look at all these areas at a really high level, but in terms of your endocrine system, your gut, your autoimmune system, because we need to get in there and see what's going on and correct for it. Because if you don't, see, your metabolism, mm. metabolism is never going to reset. But more importantly than the number on the scale or what you look like is the fact that if you leave those imbalances dormant, they end up becoming very costly and dangerous illnesses. So something that people need to start taking, you know, seriously about their health. And for me, it was a great lesson. We looked at it as a gift because it was like I had to set aside my fitness and my weight for a while. That wasn't number one for me. And it, and it never was beforehand really anyway. But in a, in a stage where you're looking at restoration, you have to put your body first and put your own wants second. And what we see is a lot of women, they're just like still trying to be like, well, I just want the weight to come off and why is it not coming off anymore? And they, da, 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 da. you know, they're kind of in that mental, emotional tailspin. But the problem is to fix, you got to fix the physical before you can get back to that. And once you're in internal imbalance, there's, you have to work on it to get it back. Yeah. Now, now you spent a lot of money, a lot of time, um, a lot of energy uh, kind of healing yourself, was, it, was there ever a time when you wanted to give up? And, it, and obviously you didn't give up, um, but um, wh why didn't you give up also? So. Wow. Because we're from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I love that question. That's a good question. Absolutely there were times, but, um, you know, it was very frustrating because in the beginning, so when we were talking about that before, Coach Strick, about like how the beginning, it was kind of frustrating sy symptoms. Like I would have a rash, I had allergies, I was tired, I didn't really feel like working out. Like they were frustrating, but they, um, and, I, and I was looking for answers. Like I would come out of work and I was just relentlessly searching online. And at that time, social media wasn't even really out. You know, a lot of people we see they're kind of going to the social media now. I was um, online researching. I think that social media is a blessing and a curse because there's a lot of, you know, accessible information out there now, but it's still not customized about their body. And these answers... A lot of it's misinformation. Yeah, are in their body, essentially. So they're kind of looking in the wrong places and they're getting stuck in, like, this generalized information online. And they may feel a little bit better, but they still have internal imbalances they're just not really aware of. And those are still going on. So... I'm kind of glad for me that that wasn't going on at that time because I was looking for research online. And, but I'm just, um, I, you know, for me, I actually first got interested in fitness and nutrition at 17 many years ago because I have a rare neurological condition. And that was my first practice in really being relentless about getting an answer for myself. I spent six years just going to get a diagnosis for that. So... Damien and I are just that way. We, we, we've always been very naturally committed to the body. We're not like, we, we're just fascinated by the human body, if that makes sense. Like, we're not these people that even though we've competed, like, we don't, we're not concerned about, like, a look. 
or a number on a scale. We do it because we think the human body is just such an amazing gift that we all receive, and it's just fascinating, and we just endlessly, tirelessly want to learn about it. And so whether we've tried to do something like an athlete or we've tried to heal an illness, we always approach it that way. And what that you know, means for us is, is really researching things to death and, and you know, looking for answers and solutions relentlessly. And so we've just had a lifetime of really being committed to a path of living in our bodies drug-free and living in them naturally. And that really, I think, helped us during that time. And I think something else, too, is, is we were kind of on a mission to prove the medical system wrong. You know, when one of Heather's doctors told her that everything's fine, it's all in her head, you know, uh, that, that's just unacceptable. You know, and it, it wasn't in her head. So it's kind of like we wanted to just say, you know what, the heck with you. We're, we're going we're gonna to do this naturally and beat it. And it was tough. It was a struggle, and it took, took some time. But we, we defied you know, Hashimoto's, according to the medical system, is not curable. Lupus is not curable. You know, all these things that were not curable, well, <laughs> we, we cured. Yeah. You know, um, so. I think, too, that um, because I had that space earlier in my life, in my early 20s of spending so much time living with a neurological condition, I spent my life being really practiced at building my body intuition, if that makes sense. Like, I put my mind into my body and I listen and I believe in my body's intuition. And where I was at that point when I was getting really sick with the Hashimoto's disease and the autoimmune illness, essentially, like, I knew that I was on a very bad path. Like, I just trust my body and I felt it intuitively. I knew that I was at the edge of my life and I was about to end up in a hospital and I didn't want to put my body, you know, in those hands at that point. So being aggressive about getting answers and just being relentless was really important. And I think some of that comes into play, too, just having a really strong body intuition and practice at that for many years really ended up helping me when I got sick to find my way out of it. Yeah, that's great. I, you guys have, you know, the same mentality as myself in that a, a, a lot of people are being told that, you know, uh, they're going to have to be on medication for the rest of their life, whether it be for thyroid or cholesterol or whatever. And a lot of this stuff that people are being told is is just so people can make money, basically. I mean, that's the that's the short story, but um, I think it's I think it's amazing and awesome. Yeah, go ahead. No, just that they don't – I think sometimes, a lot of times, they don't even know, right? And, like, that's why we yeah. felt like it was so important when – that when we had that transformation and saw that the body could heal naturally, you know, that we had to, you know, we worked really hard the last seven years to invest more into our education so that we could be able to provide a service now where women don't have to go through what I went through. Like, they don't have to, you know, find someone in the remotest area of the country and invest all this money to travel and, and go see. They literally can work right from their home and get clinical lab-based restoration work because we felt like why, you know, that shouldn't have been the last type of thing that I found. And even, and even what started to restore me wasn't exactly at all what we do today. It was, a, it was a longer path. And so we just felt like women should have that option. You know, if you want to lab test your own body, then you should have the right to do that and, and, and take a look at your own health and take it back into your own hands if you want to do it a different way. And we just want women to know that, you know, like you said, like, they don't have to just live on Synthroid. Like, that's not, there's a lot of women out there being told that they think that that's, that's healing. That, and that's, to us, that's not healed. That's just, that's just plugging a hole. That's actually just plugging a symptom with a medication. You still haven't figured out what is the root cause, why, why is it happening with your thyroid. And oftentimes, it's not the thyroid that's actually causing the issue. It's, it's other areas that need to be addressed. And they're kind of being missed, and they think, well, my symptoms feel a little better. I'm functional again now. So being, you know, I just have to live my life out on Synthroid, and we just feel like there's opportunities that aren't being brought to people. I mean, I was able to restore all that naturally, and we went back, and I, and I competed. So I pushed my body sensibly, metabolically, again, physically, you know, mentally, emotionally, and that was after, you know, healing entirely, you know, naturally and not using any form of synthetics. So... 
you know, 75 years ago, do, years ago, doctors paid attention to their patients. They, 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 they looked at their patients as an individual. You know, um, post World War II, things changed. You know, lobbyists started to get their hands in on things, and, and you know, the pharmaceutical companies started to started to <laughs> make things up. You know. Um, and now it's kind of like you go to the doctor, you got 10 minutes with, if you're lucky, 10 minutes with, with your doctor, and then they push you out. You know, so they're not, they're not even paying attention to you, who you are, and what's going on in your life. How are they going to sit there and treat you in, in that sense? You know, and that's, yeah. that, that, that's one of the big issues right now. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all about people being able to take responsibility for their own health. And... Um, We'll we'll get into that in just a second, but before we do, I just wanted to ask Damien, like, when, when you guys are going through all this, what 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 was going through your mind this whole time, Damien? Like, jumping from doctor to doctor, and your wife is pretty much you can tell that she's hurting. Like, what was going through your what was going through your mind? I was I was getting angry, you know. Um, these doctors are, are are basically making her more and more sick, you know. And, even take a step back, when, when she first started to digress, I was like a lot of husbands or boyfriends where I was like, you know what, just go, go, go get a workout. You'll feel better. You know, um, because I know that if I am a little bit tired, I go work out, I'll feel better, right? But what I didn't understand at that time 10 years ago is that the, the, the female body is way different than our bodies, you know, and, um, and that's what a lot of a lot of men need to understand is that when their when their wife or their spouse or their their girlfriend or whomever is is not feeling well, it's not in their head, it's not a, you know something that a workout is going to fix or or anything like that. There truly is an issue going on that needs to be addressed. And, and when I saw Heather just get worse and worse and worse, I started to realize that. And then it kind of like it it, it kind of uh, you know the light bulb just went off and you realized that. You know, we need to we need to take a different route, um, and we knew it was going to be a costly, you know, financially a, cost, a costly route. But what was the alternative? You know, um, let her keep spiraling until she spends the rest of her life in a hospital. You know, um, so yeah, yeah. a lot of lot of anger and, and hostility, and that's why why I, I kind of really get fired up when it comes to the medical system and and the pharmaceutical industry and, and you know the, the the food industry and politics that come into play, where we're being lied to left and right with Monsanto, with you know all these different big businesses, you know and, and you know I'm a capitalist, but at the same time, you know not at the expense of, of destroying one's health. That's just that that's gone too far, and that's what that's what's going on right now. Yeah, excellent. I think I think we could probably talk all day, <laughs> but. Uh... Let's yeah. let's talk about let's talk about this testing. And actually, I don't know uh, if you guys knew, but I, I'm also certified with um, FDN as well. I was just you know I was, it drew me to it because it just makes so much sense. And basically, being able to test yourself, um, you know, the fundamental homeostatic controls of the body, and see you know where you're at, or having a coach help you, you know understand where you're at and what, you know, the root cause of your your problems are, not just like you were saying earlier, just, you know, not just treating the symptoms. A lot of people think that if they have a headache, you know, they need an Advil, and, and that's the, the cure for their headache. And, you know, the question really is, you know, why do you have a headache? And so can you talk a little bit about um, the testing that you guys do and the work that you do with the people? Yeah, you know, it you know, when people go to their medical doctors, they're, they're, they're running all different labs, and, and they're, they're looking at markers that are really not what, what is, not, not what's the true underlying cause, right? So if you get, you know, you, do, you go to your doctor, your doctor says, well, your, um, your blood sugar is elevated, your cholesterol is elevated, your CK levels are, are elevated, your, you know, th- those are all just symptoms, you know. So we don't really look at that stuff. That's just a byproduct of malfunctions that are going on under the surface, right? So what we look at is we look at the endocrine system specific to the individual, right? So we're not saying, oh, well, your, your numbers are, are normal. Uh, we're saying are they normal relative to your stress and your lifestyle and your history, you know? 
Um, we look at digestion, if your body is absorbing nutrients. If it's not, well, <laughs> that, that's an issue too. Um, we look at uh, liver function, you know, how, how, how is the liver filtering? If it's not filtering properly, well, that's going to cascade into a lot of other areas too, um, one of them being your immune system. So we're looking at the, the integrity of your stomach, see if there's permeability, and see how your immune system is responding to different markers. Um, we look at different pathogens and parasites and, and funguses and, you know, all these different things that just because you don't have that quote-unquote symptom doesn't mean we don't have to look at it because a lot of times you are asymptomatic but you've got something going on which is causing an issue somewhere else down the line. You know, um, you had to make a point earlier about, the, you know, Hashimoto's and the thyroid problem being secondary in, 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 I'd say, nine times out of ten, maybe more, it is secondary to another issue. If your liver is congested, it, it's not going to be able to bind the, the hormone. You might have an issue with, with actual hormone coming into your body, into your cells at the receptor site, maybe clogged because of the gluten you're eating or, or whatever, you know. Um, so we're looking at all these different things that are they're really truly the underlying cause of people's health complaints. And then we're putting together a program to address that, to power up the systems, to heal them, to get them better, you know, so that they function better and then the symptoms just kind of go away. You know, and the other thing to that um, that I like to add is that with the labs, um, you know, we had experienced firsthand what the result is when they're, when they're not necessarily the right labs or the red wrong or all of the above. And, um, you know, for that, I, I had already had some experience in my life of having to have a really rare condition involved with an internal system in my body in terms of my neurological um, condition and figuring out how to get those things to function better naturally so that I could have a better experience in my body. So, you know, we enjoy being able, when we're working with people, to pull from those experiences and, and, and add into helping to individualize the process to each person that we are blessed to work with. Um, because there's just a lot of fascinating things about the human body in terms of restoration that make that process powerful. Like we have a, a client, for example, who's been working with us. And in her first seven weeks, she, her body let go of 25 pounds with no movement. So she doesn't have any fitness in her life, and she lost 25 pounds. More importantly, we got ahead of the fact that she was having a digestive concern that could progress into a serious illness, yeah, right? But, which obviously we can't discuss in detail because of the client issue, but you just don't, I mean, I'm sure you can relate to that being an FDN too, is that you don't hear of those numbers, you know, even when someone is working out aggressively and dieting aggressively, like nobody loses 25 pounds in seven weeks without any form of movement in their life, you know? So yeah. it just speaks to the power of when you really customize the approach to a person and you bring in, bring in breast practices and healing and functional nutrition and you really give to the body in a powerful way what it needs to do its best work metabolically, how much it will give back to you. And she's 70 years old. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's pretty Absolutely. impressive, yeah. Yeah, I've heard Paul Check say that. And her headaches went away, and her digestion's better, and she's sleeping better, and she's more energy throughout the day, no crashes. No food know, craving. So, so yeah. all, all that regulation, it's all about, like, it's just shifting that thinking that you, like you brought up before, the homeostatic function of the body. When you, when you restore its homeostasis or its balance, its balance point, you bring it back to balance, it can do everything that it needs to do for you well, including managing its weight. Yep, I believe that the body is a very uh, powerful thing, and I've heard Paul, Ch Paul Check say before that, like, um, people will start his program, and he says that literally overnight people can lose, like, they can look like a different person. He said they'll, they'll leave on Friday and come back on Monday and look like a different person just because the body finally was able to um, have everything it needed and to, you know, look, yeah. just release some of the fat, and so... You know, when you give the body what it needs, then it it can, you know, function properly and, and be at a normal weight instead of, you know, overweight. Um, this has been such an awesome call. Um, are are there some action, you know, actionable lifestyle nutrition takeaways and steps that 
Um, you could share with listeners about your E3 Energy Evolve system, um, uh, which may help you know them restore their own thyroid, adrenal, and metabolic health naturally. I'd love for um, you know the listeners to have a few things to start on today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we we actually, in terms of our gift that we have, if they want to, um, they can actually go through this on our on our website. But in terms of what we teach, it's P3 Energy Evolved actually is has a lot of meaning. <laughs> it's kind of our philosophy became from our experiences that you know there's all these levels of energy, which is essentially your metabolism that we're really not considering that affect our body's ability to function well, including our weight. So um, the three levels of energy that we focus on are energy in, energy out, and your energy environment. And essentially that's our system that we teach our members from. Um, So, you know, a couple things, you know, if we just touched on like energy um, in, obviously that's your nutrition, but a lot of things people leave off the table even too is like restoration. So things like your sleep and why that's so important, ways you give back into your body. Um, you know, regulating your sleep, having sleep at a regular hour <laughs> of the day before like with the light re- relative to melatonin. Um, you know, things like that that people are really not considering. Um, you know, energy out when you're talking about stress adaption cycles. Let me really step real quick. Uh, oh, you know, as far as energy in, too, another one is uh, a lot of people fear fat. You know, for the last oh, yeah. 30 or 40 years, <laughs> we've been told that fat is bad, saturated fat is bad. Eat more, you know, plant-based fats, vegetable oils, and things like that. And you know, you know, re- really, your your endocrine system needs fat, it needs cholesterol, it needs saturated fats in order to function, in order to produce all your hormones. You know, so. One of the big ones is eat fat. Don't be afraid of it. Um, eat your raw sea salt, you know, because y- y- your body's probably depleted of, of those minerals, you know. Um, so. Yeah, that's a great one, too. And then, you know, some of the tips that we give um, people is, you know, in nutrition, for example, um, if you're having, like, an energy issue, Using raw sea salt on your food can help with adrenal or energy issues. And um, you know, if you're in an energy deficit, a lot of one of the things people don't realize is even how we prepare our foods. You know, a lot of people are following food trends online. It is kind of like the thing to do, but they don't necessarily understand how they're um, how that's translating in terms of their digestive system. So, for example, like you know, a lot of people are going raw. They're they're getting into raw foods now. But for some people, if you're having digestive imbalances, that's not really the greatest thing to do for reasons related to your gut and pH and so on. So just things like that to consider is that this is really about bio-individualizing your approach and not kind of just following what everyone's doing online. Yeah, or even, even like juicing, everybody's talking about juicing. Well, you know what, if you have candida or a, a, you know, yeast overgrowth, which a lot of people do, you shouldn't juice at all. Yeah, to make it worse. So... Um, and then, you know, as far as energy out, we talk about stress management, health imbalances, lifestyle, and movement. That's where we focus. But one tip that we could give your listeners is just, um, you know, the thing with the, there's a lot of um, focus on HIIT training, and all the research was pointing in that direction for a while, and we, we get it. But the thing is, we'll need to realize that if you're, you know, overusing that technique, um, or even depending on what type of personality you are, that may not be the best way for your body to let go of fat. We've had clients where we remove their exercise and they lose fat, or we limit their exercise and they lose fat. So it just depends. Again, it's a more um, you know individual, and um, the you know the tendency, the answer isn't necessarily over exercising. There's a lot of ways to lose fat and not really have to do a ton of exercise or you know, like you were saying before, that's a way that your body perceives stress. So we have to consider all the pieces. Um, you know, and just understanding that it's not normal to have health issues. That's actually not the, the human body's normal. So everyone kind of thinks, you know, well, I just have allergies or I just have, you know, cold sores or I just get yeast infections. And we've been taught as a society to think that that's normal. But really when we went through that phase and we had healed my Hashimoto's and my autoimmune illness, everything that I had for 30 years before that just went away. So really normal is 
is being in balance where your body has no health issues. So nothing. No, you don't get sick. You don't get colds. You don't get allergies. You know, you don't get athlete's foot. You don't get yeast infections. You that's don't need vaccines. Yeah, that's actually normal. So we want people to know that if that's something that they want to experience, it's possible for all of us. But we have to kind of start digging into this work, right, so that we can restore balance internally, you know, using the lab and getting, you know, more aggressive and digging deeper and really individualizing how we support our bodies in all these different areas. Um, and the last, you know, level that we talk about is energy environment. So in there we focus on things like endocrine disruptors, environmental stressors, and detoxification. So things like removing fluoride from your body is a great first step that we like to suggest to people that we work with. Um, fluoride is a, a huge endocrine disruptor. It affects the thyroid negatively, your nervous system negatively. So, you know, making sure that if you're looking at things like products that fluoride tend to be in, like toothpaste or your water, you're removing that from your body and not allowing that into your body or at least limiting it as much as possible. Um, also things like EMF exposure, so electromagnetic field that we're exposed to through things in our environment, our phones, our computers, you know, our wireless in every shop that we walk into today, all these things affect our body metabolically. So there's some of the just like high level, Sean, those are some of the things that we go into. But if they want to go to um, the gift page on our website, they can download our full guide that goes deeper into each level of our system in terms of energy in, energy out and energy environment. Yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to uh, include a link on the, on the down, on the page for the um, free gift, and I appreciate that. Um, Heather and Damien, it's been an excellent call. Uh, if the listeners want to get in, in touch with you or in contact with you, uh, how, how should they go about doing that? Uh, they can go to our website at e the number three the word energy and then evolved past tense dot com. And they can just reach out to us there on either the contact tab or the pop-up box. Let us know if they have questions. We're happy to answer them. We have a pop-up box. They can just chat us their questions. Um, or they can also, we offer free consultations and assessments where we could speak with them privately if they have any concerns with their own issues in terms of their metabolism or weight loss resistance, thyroid, endocrine dysfunction, any of the, all of the above. <laughs> we would love to help them. So that's a great way for them to reach out if they have questions. All right. Well, thank you so much, Heather and Damien. And I I know the listeners uh, got some valuable information from our call today. Uh, Thank you so much. Did that story sound familiar? Do you or someone you know have health issues, but the doctors can't find anything wrong? If so, I hope Damien and Heather's story has inspired you to conduct your own investigation and begin your own healing journey. This path isn't always easy, and thankfully, Heather had her husband Damien to walk beside her and join her on her road to recovery. Not everyone has a husband or wife to lean on in their health journey, and that's why I created the Wham Fam. The Wham Fam stands for the Weight Loss and Muscle Building Family, and it is the free membership over at CalorieConundrum.com. This membership gives you support in your healing journey and provides resources and aligns you with like-minded individuals who are all on similar health journeys. This membership also gives you access to podcast transcripts, bonus interviews, free webinars, free health and fitness challenges, special discounts, and access to the free Wham Fam Facebook group. I hope you will join our weight loss and muscle building family. And with that said, this is Coach Strick saying thanks for listening. And remember, when calories in, calories out doesn't work, that, my friend, is a calorie conundrum. This podcast, including Coach Strick and guests, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects for the use of any information contained herein. Coach Strick and or guests may recommend products or services in which they have a direct or indirect financial interest. To find out more, please visit www.calorieconundrum.com.